And we are live. I am here with Kenny Strawn. He is a YouTuber, Patriot YouTuber from California. And uh, we just thought we'd talk a little about, you know, he. Uh oh. oh. Hmm? Hang on. I occasionally do that. Oh, you couldn't hear that. Could you? Um, yeah, I accidentally um, left the other link on oh, the wow. the regular link, but I, I I have headphones on, so I don't think anybody heard me. Okay, got it. Anyway, um, so yes, so <laughs> now that that's resolved, I'm here with Kenny Strand. He's a YouTuber from California out behind enemy lines, and um, yeah. So he just wants to, we'll start out talking a little bit about his journey from blue-pilled conservative to red-pilled conservative. Yeah, so basically I actually started out back in 2012 or whatever, I was a libertarian, in fact, and I actually honestly regret this. I voted for, thankfully, thankfully I did not vote for, I did not repeat the, my 2012 mistake in 2016, but I did vote for Johnson in 2012, but to the first time he ran, because of course I was a libertarian back then. I went from that to being, I went from libertarian to typical social conservative neocon as soon as Sean McDowell spoke at my church and kind of red-pilled me a little bit on the social issues. Then, and, then, and then, of course, Greg Kokel spoke at my church again, too. They, they, these, these guys, we actually have an annual conference called Weekend in the Word, and these Christian apologetics people helped me out with that. Then, of course, in, then of course, in 2016, I actually started putting two and two together and thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are, is there a connection between the illegal immigration flooding in and the increase in you know, all kinds of social degeneracy going on. Is there, a li is there a link between the government promoting degeneracy and these illegal aliens coming into the border? I found out there was. That kind of pushed me more and more into this paleoconservative thinking. Yes. Um, well, like I was telling you before we went on the air, for me, one one of the issues, besides the major red pill, which was, like, realizing how communism is, the extent to which it has taken hold, but one of the exactly. other issues... That was a big one for me, too. If, if after, of course, after the election, when I noticed that the whole Milo thing going on, the whole, the left was actually being, was being as violent as they were, that really was what, it, what inspired me to say, no, you know what, I can't, st I can't stay home, I have to go out and confront these people. Same here. Okay, Finnick. Okay, go on. So, um, well, one of the issues with when I lived in Texas was that I constantly dealt with like men, you know, um, grabbing my rear end. I had a few incidences where they grabbed my front, and yeah, so yeah. I mean, that's that's sexual assault. That's and the, and the, the right. Facts, these are mostly people who are here illegally doing that. That's really bad. Well, and I knew that it was part of, you know, a the cultures that these people came from. And that was, people would go, well, it's their culture. And I thought, like, you know, as a woman, you know, I was kind of centrist -y. I mean, I was always basically a conservative. But I was, like, much more, like, centrist blue-pilled. And I, and I remember, like, starting to think, like, our... You were, like, center-right at the time. Yeah, my foremothers, our foremothers worked so hard to, um, our foremothers worked so hard to create all these, like, rights for women. And when you bring these people in who have these mindsets that are, like, um, a completely different that mindset, uh, like a sex, it almost, yeah, a sexist mindset. To be you honest know, with you, that's very similar to what's going on in Europe. With the, I mean, you have all these people coming in from these Muslims who are even worse on that regard. But so well, yeah, I, I mean, well, now I live in New York City. 
So, um, yeah. And there was an incident when or worse. Yeah, absolutely. When I, when I moved, I lived in San Antonio and then I moved back where I grew up, which is Buffalo. Um, and then, and then I moved to New York city later on. So during the like two years or whatever that I lived in Buffalo in between San Antonio and living in New York city, there was this one incident where I was at the grocery store and I was looking for my wallet and this like Muslim looking guy was two of them were behind me in line and they started to act like they were going to pay for me. And it just like creeped me out that like total strangers were like acting like assertive on me like that. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, and then like they kind of sort of followed me. So, oh, like, wow. I turned off and I, like, drove around in some subdivisions to make sure I had sufficiently lost them. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I mean, in the case of, yeah, and it definitely, I mean, the whole Islam issue, that's really one of the one of the key differences between the alt-right and the European identitarians is that the Europeans recognize that Islam, that the, 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 the main concern, the main problem that they're fighting is the islamization is unlike whereas america whereas the american alt-right is a little bit you know di- differentiated on that i mean look at one of the main uh, to be honest with you one of the com- one of the guys who the european site is a guy named renault camus back in 2014 he's the guy who coined the term great replacement by the way back in 2014 he actually made a series of flyers and on that flyers they say no to the change of people and of civilization and no to anti-semitism in french it doesn't just say one or the other it says both no, it says no to both and this right. guy is the and this guy is the guy that martin selner is cited extensively by martin selner extensively by abel Bodhi, extensively by the british and french identitarian leaders yet for some reason the americans I, I've yet to see an Amer. I've yet to hear of an American. I, I've yet to hear of Patrick Casey cite the guy, you know. Mm. And so you and you you also have these people like you also have these people like, for example, of course there are other intellectuals that the Europeans do cite who are a bit who who aren't. I mean, they aren't necessarily. They've never touched this issue as far. They, they've never touched the whole. Jewish issue that the alt right, which I don't again, I do not agree with that, and neither does come, neither do the, I neither neither do the European identitarians. The European identitarians, Martin Sellner in his videos, he openly refers to the political. He, he refers to the elites as a class, which they are. The class that they're a political class, not an ethnicity. You know, right. And so the the, the people who are promoting the great replacement are in they're 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 not in not a race they're in they're in a, they're a class of elites who are just snobby and entitled they're all right i mean and, so, and some, they're, of, they're, and some of them are jewish but not all of them are exactly and idea. And, and, yeah exactly i mean i mean you i mean honestly they're all there are always these these people who are talking about you know to be honest with you, I would be, I, I don't know if anyone has ever thought about putting the echoes around Sadiq Khan's name, around Hillary Clinton's name, around Barack Obama's name, echo, echo, echo in all of those cases. They should, because those guys are actually, are just as bad as what the, as the people that the alt-right goes after, you know? Well, the alt-right comes after me. I don't know if you know that. So yeah, you may too. receive I mean, yeah. pressure but for yeah, being on my yeah, channel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good point. But yeah, they're, yeah, they're <laughs> But yeah, they're cra- they, they, they go you after were, the wrong people. <laughs> you were in um you were on the white elephants at at the same time as I believe uh Doctor Strangelove oh, yeah, was on there. Yeah, they were yeah, exactly. They were they, they go they definitely they go after they they're definitely and and I and I actually do I mean Doctor the Doctor Strangelove guy, I really do not agree with I mean he he, he does well, have he, some, found, yeah, he, he found my channel at one point. And, and started. He, well, first, he was trying to convince me to join the alt right. I guess he didn't realize uh, I was Jewish. And when I told yeah. him I wasn't interested in the alt right, he kept, "Oh no, we need women. You know, you're great. You're funny. This and that." Wow. 
And somebody else cut in and told him, um, "Wow, you know, she's a Zionist Jew. And then he, like, wow. got pissed and started leaving wow. all crazy. kinds of... And if he sees me commenting anywhere, he comments under me going, she's a Jew! She's a wow. Jew! This one yeah, here is yeah, a... It's the, you know, it's and K-word. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and of course, like I said, and of course, I, I even though I am a... And of course, I, of course, am a Christian conservative, paleo-conservative. But yeah, the, I mean, you've got this. And, and of course, that's why I'm more... I'm, I'm, a, I'm also a very staunch traditionalist if you look at some of my my videos. Right. They definitely yeah, are. I mean, you really and truly don't like degeneracy. That's the thing about the alt-right. A lot of these people, they're like, eh, degeneracy, degeneracy. And then, like, you see them supporting things that would be considered degenerate. Exactly. I mean, it's funny. I mean, that's honestly what, one of the main concerns I have with, you know, they're actually, I mean, even though I, even though, of course, they're, they're, they definitely do have, even though, of course, Selner and those others have not have not actually agreed with him on this one particular issue, there are, there are certain intellectuals that are, of course, influential on the European identitarian movement, not on this issue, but on other areas, who have openly called for the, quote, repaganization of Europe, unquote. And, and of course, like I said, Selner, of course, is Catholic. He does not support that. But you, but you have to read the, the whole issue of neo-paganism in the alt-right is really a contradiction when it comes to degeneracy. Because you have this... Right. These degenerates, who, the d degenerates who are coming in thinking, well, you know, the whole... They, 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 they come in, they, and, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not sure if... So, so yeah, which source was it that said that in Charlottesville someone, like, drank blood or whatnot? You heard, you told me that in Discord. Um. Or on, on I don't channel. know if I should say. Yeah, okay, you don't know if you should say live. Good point, because that could be, that could very, that could backfire big time. Okay. Yeah, you got this, it's definitely insane. Cause but you can see the chat on the uh, Hangouts, right? What? You can see the chat, the side chat on Hangouts, right? Yes, I can. I can see myself and stuff. Yep. No, but there's a chat on the side. Mm -hmm. On the side. Where is it? Uh, yeah, I don't see a sidebar, but yeah, because I'm actually in the. I'm not using YouTube. I'm actually in the Hangouts app. Right. Oh, because you're yeah. on your phone. That might be why. Yeah, I'm on my phone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using the iOS app. So and I don't think it has that ability. But all right, figures. You can actually see the light. You can actually see the YouTube live chat from your end. Um, well, yeah, I have the loot. I have the YouTube live chat. I have that popped out. And then there's yeah. a chat inside Hangouts. Yeah, that but I have sense. I well, popped it out and then I like wiggled the um windows so that they're right next to each other. Yeah, tell me about it. So um so what's it so yeah it's it's crazy. I mean you've got these and, and yeah these these pagan LARPers and, and honestly I'm Yeah know, somebody I'm actually these. said in the chat that they're all a bunch of weebs or yeah. half the oh, alt right yeah. are weebs. <laughs> Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of them, especially. I mean, there's there's some who. I mean, yeah. The, apparently, the whole the whole the whole that kind of ri those kind of rituals. I do not support. The, the, they definitely go against the whole de the whole anti degeneracy bit, especially. And and to be honest with you, I read and and yeah, that's the whole reason why I've got the the Bible going on. Oh, you, you just sent something. Okay, yeah, you just sent a, a a message to Discord. I'll check it later. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's definitely quite an interesting thing going on with... You've got these degenerate who are... You know, I'm going to ch change my angle a little bit because I'm get getting... It's a weird position with my... Okay, I'm, I've am i got a better angle now. It's, Is that uh, a green crazy screen? Got, what? Is that a green screen? It's a... It's a uh, an improvised one, yeah. I painted my the section of my wall green for that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, in fact, I did make one video using that, but it's a very it's very difficult to. I mean, I have to. I'm so glad I got this. 
this two-in-one selfie stick stand that I have here because it's uh, it's going to come in handy for that. This actually does this actually does is a multi-use because I also use it for I use the I use this of course to do some editing and I actually I have an editor on my phone called Luma Fusion which does some very cool stuff. Hmm. And so I use that to do I also use that to make the content that I make on YouTube. And yeah, the whole the whole you, you saw the video of the stunt in Huntington Beach, right? That Black Pigeon Speaks commented on. Um was that like an opt out thing? No, that was the this the the the, the banner attempt. Um, I I mean I've seen some of your videos. Like when you were on the white elephants, I was like, oh, is yeah. that Kelly Strawn? I'm subscribed yeah, to are. him. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah the the videos of the, I I made a video just I it was on on Thursday I actually is when I posted it Wednesday night. I went up to Huntington Beach to do to to attempt to post a banner, attempt to put a banner up promoting my May twelfth event, only for a bunch of, you know, these, I wanted these La Raza people who they they started they were triggered by it. They so someone cut cut the zip ties, sabotaged the whole thing, mm. and we got the whole and we got the whole thing, I in real time. We were they it was doing giving timestamps on the video and all that. And yeah, we, I actually teamed up with, I don't know who, you, I, you know who Kim Sorgente is? No, I don't. Okay. Actually. Yeah. He's a, he back in November when Lauren Southern spoke at UCI, he wore a black pigeon speaks shirt. <laughs> and so I mentioned that in the video. And that, that of course, that, that, of course, granted, a, a, that, of course, resulted in a compliment being given. But, yeah, crazy stuff, you know? Yes. And he, and he, uh, and he, and he was there. He helped put the banner up. Then he, then he gave, he actually interviewed him a little bit at the end of the video, gave more information on who exactly was triggered by the whole issue. You know? Right. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy stuff going on. So, so what exactly? Yeah. So, and you're at, so of course you're in New York, right? Yes. I live in New York city. Yeah. That's where I actually, my mother, that's where my mother grew up was in New York city. She actually grew up on Staten Island. Ah, yeah. Staten so, Island is very suburban though. Like what? they actually, um, that's the only County in New York city that carried for Trump. Yeah, of course. That's no surprise, of course. They're just, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of the outskirts of the area. They, right. He, he, yeah, it's definitely my, back in the 1950s, of course, you had a lot of, it, it was a, it's a huge, my mother, of course, is half Italian herself. And yeah, she grew up, of course, in a family with about five other people. It's, and of course, that, that area there in Staten Island was actually where the, the vast majority of members of the mafia resided at the time now of course not so much but the ones that are left pretty much moved to long island and new jersey yeah. um yeah. there's not a lot of there there are a few italian neighborhoods left yeah but a lot of like one area that used to be really italian and mamba mob affiliated in queens on the border of brooklyn it's yeah. um indians are moving in there wow so, how it's going and that's uh, yeah there's there's quite a yeah the whole point of the whole multiculturalism thing and honestly i mean a lot of the even though there were some italians who did damage i mean the vast vast majority of them were not were not like that i mean you look at the whole thing with mexico now there there's more in there the illegal immigration is a lot there's a lot more people who are inclined to just jump the border Whereas in the case of the Italian immigrants, they had to, a lot of them, particularly the first wave back in the late 1800s to 1920s, they had to go through a long process. And, the, and a lot of them actually did it legally and not illegally. Whereas well, that was the, back when, before they had airplanes. So when they came over from Italy, they, they would come on, on, they would boats, come on, yeah. boat, 
They would come on boats. The boats didn't even dock in New York. They all docked on Ellis Island. Yeah, exactly. And ev- and that, for, and they had um, to, and they had is to it go Ellis through. Island? Yeah. And so they had to go through that long process on Ellis Island, too. To exactly. If you, and, that's, if, and that's what my, that's what my maternal great, my maternal grandmother's parents, my great grandparents on this side, that's what they had to do and they did it. So if they can do it, why can't anyone else do it? And they used you to, know? like they used to check people for diseases and stuff. Exactly. And... They, they don't do that anymore. The whole, the Heart Cellar Act, it completely fundamentally changed our demographics in my, I mean, we need to go back to, I mean, honestly, they, to, and, I, and I'm tempted to go back to the whole, you know, thing with war. And I actually mentioned this in my video about the great replacement, Warren G. Harding, you know, he, he passed it. He passed a law that basically he called the emergency quota act. And then Calvin Coolidge followed up with the immigration act of 1924, the Johnson Reed act, both of those laws severely restricted non-white immigration you know to the to a very to a trickle basically until until the heart seller act was passed right and, and it was during that time of course have had that had those uh two immigration reform acts not been passed for one the the 1920s would not have war have not have roared and two the great depression probably would have been a lot worse than it was you know yeah, absolutely. Because of, of all that that open borders thing stuff going on and welfare and growing the government and everything like that, the whole re- and then fast forward to the nineteen and it was actually in the nineteen fifties. In nineteen fifty two, of course, you had a slight change in that, but it wasn't it wasn't really that this demographic change that we're seeing right now. The whole the de- the demographic replacement is the real problem because it negatively affects the electorate the electorate absolutely changes as a result of there are people i mean it, and honestly that that whole it red pilled me a little bit further in hunt with that social experiment that i made in huntington beach because all of a sudden i realized exactly why a lot of these people vote for the left it's because they they actually don't support things like fundamental constitutional values like free speech like whatever they have these people who are just flooding the border think that they seem to believe the lie that that hate speech is not free speech. It is. In fact, there is I actually made a video back in December called There's No Such Thing as Hate Speech, in which I point out that they, they, they're judging on subjective grounds, which is a problem. And the, the I mean people people who want to censor who want to censor you on subjective grounds and this this cutting up of the zip ties holding my banner up that's just the one latest example of that people who are who have no regard for american values period who are coming in trying to replace the people who do have respect for them right absolutely so there and so that's and and that's the same situation going on in europe with muslims and you actually mentioned though i mean and they're and they're also they're even though they're not as bad as muslims with the whole sexual assault with being perverted they still have this whole issue with they they, they've done some great they i mean they they, i've heard what what they did to you i'm like wow these people are just as are are just like the people trying to do damage to europe they're being they're they're very honestly i want to say their culture is so different yeah and you know on the one hand on the one hand, you complain about it, and people will even say, "Oh, well, that's their culture." So people no, yeah, know that, that they have. That, but then, well, on the other yeah, hand, the people whole... say, "Oh, all cultures are equal, or something, or or no, they're not different." No, no, if the, no, if no, yeah, they 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 that is a contradiction. On one hand, if all cultures were equal, then they would all support the same values, and they don't. That's the problem. People, people think that, I mean, I mean, the whole, the whole, re- if, if, the, if culture, different cultures need to be kept co- quarantined from each other. That's the, that's the problem with open borders. That when people say that's when people respond with that's their culture, what they're doing is, is specifically alienating the people who have been di- di- directly affected. And of course, you're one of those people. 
you know? It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And so, and so am I. I mean, back when I was in El Toro High School, of course, I lived in Orange County. In fact, I actually am not, don't live too far from Vince at all. I live in the same part of Orange County that Vince lives in. Um, yeah, I, I went to school around here and basically when I was in high, when I was in high school and even earlier, all the people who have been bullies, not only to me, but to virtual, a lot of people throughout the school, every single one of them was either African American or Hispanic. And in most, and in the vast, vast majority of cases, they were Hispanics with parents who's, who, who, who actually didn't even one of the guys who is constantly attacking and, you know, cut, you know, taunting me, cutting in line, everything else, cutting good, try, trying to, for, trying to force me, you know, to off the bus and whatnot. At this guy here, his, his mother, he had to talk to, he had to constantly translate what my teacher was saying to him into his, into Spanish for his mother to understand. If you, I'm sorry, if you're kind of English, the, the whole issue of learning English needs to be an immigration requirement, period. Right. The whole the, and and, and, that, and that's the problem. These the, these people refuse to learn the language. They refuse to, to to properly assimilate into our culture. They refuse to they, they fly the Mexican flag higher than the American flag. They, re, they they refuse to respect our immigration laws that govern the immigration process. And so the and so the the odds of his of course the odds of this guy growing up in an illegal alien family are high, and that's. That's the point, you know, if the, you know, the bu bullies who are illegal aliens who came here the wrong way, their, their entire culture is just fucked up, period. Right. Absolutely. And, and, then, and, then I, and the whole, and I've seen, I've actually been, even though I personally have not, even though I, I have not been, been, you know, sexually abused by any, and of course I never, of course I was, I, I, I was defending women of all who, well, who, were, I know. who were being in the issues. There were people who were who were, and I was an eyewitness, and and in, in, in school, in high school, and in middle school, to these to these guys who were who were calling all women they ran into hoes, sluts. They would they they would they would be they would taunt them sexually too. And I was constantly going, and I was constantly going after those guys. So one of them I actually kicked in the nuts and got me suspended quite a bit. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well, and I know another thing you've mentioned in your videos is that people make the mistake of thinking that uh, you're gay, and so like yeah, exactly. men hit on exactly. you. Exactly, that's a yeah. They 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 have no and and all they have to do is watch one. There's one video I made that I and of course that I of course the the video about the what is it the oh yeah the be gone thoughts and perverts video. Yes, that the, was a recent one. Yeah, he, yeah, basically, I, I, I mentioned the, and yeah, I'm being, having, like I said, the, the only group, the only, lo the only group that has ever been loyal to me and, 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 and that has ever welcomed me and been, and been kind and every, the, the, the only one that, that is the, is the least multicultural one that I ever was a member of. And that's the, that's my church. I mean, the, the, you have these these multi the, the whole the, and, and and that's no surprise, of course. All like my, my the congregation that I'm of is I, I I don't know what percent white it is, but it's high percent white, and they're, they they and and that and they're the only one. And of course, they're also Christian, which does have that in, there is that that factor to deal with. But the Christian the 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 whole the church is the only one to ban this whole issue of you and the only one to effectively to effectively be a natural environment that is not that, that is not of the of the school and and i got to see the difference but and, and as i look back on this i see the difference not only in demographics in the church but more importantly in the whole more importantly in the morality aspect of it all you know the christian the christian life the christian morality has an impact that is much that is very good on these people, it, the, the, and the, the the lack of Christianity, the lack of Christian guidance in the schools, is have at the same time has a negative impact on on the whole. It, it results in yep. The communists did that in the sixties. They took God out of the public schools.
Exactly. Jimmy Carter was the one who federalized the Department of, of Education, and they're doing so. They're Which so is unconstitutional. Now. Exactly. It's so that they need they need the federal Department of Education needs to be abolished, and in fact, even our Education Secretary Betsy DeVos agrees on that. She, she would she would like to lose her job. Yeah, I'm sure you know? she'd land on her feet. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. There's um, there's a lot of like federal departments that are unconstitutional. Yeah, so they need to. The government needs to really downsize, and and the only way it can, without people bitching and complaining, is if we first start deporting. Because these people who are coming in, flooding the border, they have they often they are big government bring, minded. Yeah, not, yeah, they're not only big government minded. Like the vast, vast majority of them, not only are big government minded, they're also degeneracy minded. They believe. I mean, the and as I mentioned in a few of my videos, the age of consent laws. This is something I was trying to say back earlier. The age of consent laws in Africa, in not only in Mexico but in Latin America, are are extremely lackluster, extremely lax. The in southern Baja, the age of consent is. 12 and northern Baja at 16 in other parts of Mexico it's like it ranges between 12 and 14 you actually it, it was fit yeah, it's 15 and like 15 in Honduras and in Honduras 13 in Guatemala it's this crit you have the, the and, and even all the way down to the southern tip of South America the ages of consent are so low that it enables a lot of these these guys to be perverts and that's yeah. the problem. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's the, and, and the whole, and, and that's, and they've been, these ages of consent have been this way in the Latin American community for decades. That's why there's so much degeneracy down there. That's why people are so inclined to be immoral as they, even though, and it's, it's funny that they, that they, that they claim to also be Catholic, but at the same time, they don't seem to take the Bible seriously. And take what the Bible says on Christian morality seriously. Well, the Pope is like... Yeah. I think I put a comment on one of your videos recently. You did a video about the Pope, and I'm like... Oh, you yeah. Know, they the used to Pope always Francis joke... is a complete idiot. Yep. Is the Pope Catholic? And it's like, that's not even like... You can't even use that anymore, because... It's like, is the Pope Catholic? Like, it's actually a question. It used to be like, you'd the say Pope that, is... like... like you know, as it was like, you'd assume it, but the Pope does not espouse traditionally Catholic values. You're not actually Catholic, though, right? You're Protestant? I'm, yeah, I'm Lutheran, actually. Well, that, that's the church that I was raised in. And so, but yeah, crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the Catholic religion has always been my, kind of my, like my, nobody my really mother, follows my, it. My maternal grandmother, of course, like I said, they, they, they were Italian. My maternal grandmother grew up in, of course, the Catholic Church, but then married into my maternal grandfather's family, who's German, and he's he was Lutheran. So that's that's how that happened. But yeah. Yeah. So crazy stuff. All right, so it's been great um, hearing all about your story a little bit, and people yeah. can. I put his channel in the description, so everybody can go check him out. He has thanks lots so of great videos, and um, thanks everyone for stopping by my channel. I will see everyone next time. All right, thank you.